revision of codes. And uh, with him, of course, are our uh, officials from the autonomous region in uh, Muslim Mindanao. Later on, we will acknowledge our uh, officials, guests, and uh, participants. Are we all uh, settled? In a short while, we will uh, begin with uh, the uh, public hearing. Good morning, everyone. We would like to welcome you all to this uh, public hearing on the proposed laws to change the uh, 1987 Constitution. And uh, we'll start with the singing of the Pambansang Awit and the ARMM hymn. We would like to request everyone to please stand. And uh, after the Pambansang Awit and the singing of the ARMM hymn, please uh, remain standing for the invocation. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Oh, 
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim wa qala rabbukum aduni asajib lakum amin ya Allah amin ya rabbal alamin Allahumma inna nas'aluka an tuwafiqa ru'asa'ana wa zu'ama'ana wa umana'ana li biladina bangsa moro wa rikhasatan fi ARMM lima fihi maslahatil biladi wal ibad wa lima fihi maslahatil islami wal muslimin wa khasatan Al-Muhafidul Iqlim Ya Al-Akh Mujib Hattaman Li Islahi Biladina Wa Sya'bina Ya Allah Ya Arhamar Rahimin Rabbana Atina Fid Dunya Hasanah Wa Fil Akhirati Hasanah Wa Kina Azab Al-Nar Wa Kina Azab Al-Nar Wa Salillahum Ala Muhammadin Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Barik Wa Salim Wa Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Toyonon Baka Berak Tegenon Bunbunan Tulus Meketafu Mengetahu gay debak foto pisuki pantai ini, labi nai fus pesukuli flinda gane, buluk hendak mengetahu gay saraki bahungan, melawan bebeni tersang, mengot gay ke fio fedau berab ke glowhon, fio ke glowhon, ino keluhan nai galbek gay, getuntai deb ketaya mui, lalangnya muiya gay deb rotori pantai ini, keluhan melawan nai galbek gay. Sandai ke BME raru gaye, berab iname taman sataman, BM say gefukukul bege, men pelimbag, berab tampadai pengadapane barakatan tulus. Sangalan ng ama at ng anak at ng Espiritu Santo, Amen. Mapagmahal at mahabaging Dios sama. Kaming mga hinirang mong anak sa Mindanao, mga Muslim, lumad at Kristiyano, ay lubos na dumudulog sa iyo upang idalangin ang aming mga kahilingang kapayapaan, kasaganaan at pagkakaisa ng buong sambayanan. Miti po naming sundin ang iyong kaluuban na mamumuhay ng mapayapa, may respeto sa bawat isa, at itataguyod ang mga alituntuning na kasaad sa bawat pananampalatayang aming kinagisnan. Itong lahat ay aming hinihiling sa ngalan ni Jesus na aming Panginoon. Amen. You may now uh, take your uh, seats. And uh, we would like to acknowledge the uh, following uh, officials and uh, guests and uh, of course your participants to this uh, public hearing. First, we would like to acknowledge Senator Francis Kiko Pagilinan. And uh, he is the chairman of the Senate Committee on Constitutional Amendments and Revision of uh, Codes. We also would like to acknowledge the uh, Speaker of the Regional Legislative Assembly, we have Dato Rooney Sinsuan. And from the Office of the Regional Governor Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, we have Madam Norcalila May Mambuay Kampong, our Chief of Staff. Morning, ma'am. And uh, for our resource persons who are uh, around, we would like to acknowledge Attorney Michael O. Mastura, former representative, 1st District of Maguindanao and Cotabato City. Please stand, sir, for recognition, sir. Thank you. Next, we have uh, the Secretary General, Secretary General Jonato Mokodef of the
the organization of uh, Tiduray Lambangyan Conference, Nuru Upi, Magindanao. We also have attorney Alicidni Di Tukalan, Dean Mindanao State University College of Law. We would like to acknowledge also attorney Mohammad Muktadir Estrella of the Notre Dame University College of Law. And we have Ms. Romelin Cruz, Alianza na mga Mamamayan para sa Karapatang Pantao or AMKP. We also have Ms. Laida Musa, Kilusan na mga Lumalabang Mamamayan para sa Pagbabago ng Bayan or Kilos Bayan. Baka meron po akong hindi pa na-acknowledge, please uh, say so. <laughs> sa ating mga RPs, baka later ay uh, meron pang mga darating four-hour officials in the Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. We would like to acknowledge, nakikita ko po, si Attorney uh, Ishak Mastura, ang chairman po ng Regional Board of Investment. We also have Secretary Alonto of the Department of Agriculture and Fisheries. Sir, please stand for recognition. We also have uh, Engineer Dong Anayatin or ASEC for uh, Pamana Program, ARMM. And we have ASEC uh, Assistant Cabinet Secretary Mads uh, Guru. And uh, we also would like to acknowledge Attorney Baratukal Kaudang, representing the Provincial Governor of uh, Lano del Sur and other representatives of the uh, Provincial Governors of uh, ARMM. We also would like to acknowledge the uh, guest and participants coming from the non-government organizations, private sector, and uh, other uh, institutions, ano po, the academe, our students from the Cotabato City State Polytechnic College, and uh, from the Notre Dame University. We would like also to acknowledge the Executive Director of the Bureau of Public Information. We have Director Amil Bahar Mawadil. And the presence of our partners sa ating trabaho sa media po. Magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. And now, we would like to uh, hear the uh, welcome remarks of Dato Rooney Sinswat, Regional Speaker, Regional Legislative Assembly. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim to uh, sa ating panauhin ngayon uh, Honorable Francis Kiko Pangilinan Sir Chairman ng uh, Committee on Amendment Revisions and Codification of uh, Laws of the Senate of the Philippines tanggang uh, mga committee secretariat at uh, sa kaliwa niya si Atty. Mambuay Chief of Staff at sa ating mga resource speakers aking kasamaan sa Assembly si uh, Honorable uh, Attorney Alan Padate and uh, Honorable Alex Minor at sa inyong lahat na narito ngayon pinapabot po, ko po sa inyo mula sa aking puso ang pagbati ng Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh First of all, the regional government would like to express the, its gratitude for this golden opportunity given to the people of the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao to be consulted on one of the most important issues now in the country, the amendment or revision of the Philippine Constitution. We thank the hardworking chairman of the committee Honorable Francis Kiko Pangilinan and his party for not thinking twice in coming here to lend your ears to the Bank Samoro. In this way, we feel that we are very much part of the process 
and that we can contribute greatly to the per preservation of Filipinos' most prized possession, democracy. We also thank all the stakeholders who are here to participate in today's public consultation. Thank you for the time you will spend here so that your voice and will can be heard and resonate through the walls of this complex up to the great pillars of the Senate of the Philippines. Whatever the result of the public consultation may produce, we have become part of history. The insights and opinions that we will give as citizens of the Republic of the Philippines As citizens of the Republic of the Philippines, Bank Samoro will be the guiding light of our esteemed lawmakers in their steps toward the amendment or revision of the fundamental law of the land. Marami salamat po muli sa pagbisita sa Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, ang tahanan ng Bank Samoro. Welcome po sa minamahal naming Rehyong Arm. May you have the best of your time here in the Autonomous Region. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, uh, Speaker uh, Daturuni Sinswat of the RLA. And uh, before we uh, proceed, we would like to acknowledge the following Honorable Abulalang Padate and Honorable Alexander Menor, both uh, members of the uh, Regional. Uh, Legislative Assembly. And uh, the uh, ex-Vice Governor, former Vice Governor of the uh, province of uh, Maguindanao, we have the Honorable Dustin Mastura, sir. And of course, the Executive Director of the Regional Planning and Development Office, we have Engineer Baintan Adil Ampatuan. Good morning, ma'am. So we now uh, proceed to uh, the next part. Pero, ito po, meron po kami ng mention na house rules sa muna. Wala, hindi po allowed sa atin ng pagkain sa loob ng uh, SKCC. And uh, you'll be given a uh, food stubs. Meron na po ba tayo? Kasi mamaya po, during lunch, ay uh, magdi-distribute ng pagkain. And uh, ito po yung pinaka importante sa lahat. During the uh, consultative uh, hearing, para sa kaalaman nating lahat, si uh, Senator uh, Francis Kiko Pangilinan po will ask each resource persons to make their presentation. Yung presentation na po na yon will... Uh, last for five, around five to seven minutes, you know? And after the presentation, yun pong ating participants can uh, ask uh, questions and the or pwede rin po submit yung ating hard copy kung may mga resolutions tayo na hawak, you no? Know, for the record po yan ng, uh, ng Senate. And, uh, Pwede rin po natin isulat sa piece of paper yung ating mga katanungan mamaya. No? So, okay. Klaro po ba tayo? Mukhang seryosa tayong lahat, ano? Sige. Tuloy po tayo sa ating uh, next part ng ating uh, program this morning. And uh, this is going to be the uh, consultative uh, hearing proper. And I would like to turn over the microphone to Senator Francis Kiko Pangilinan, Chairman of the Senate Committee on Constitutional Amendments and Revisions of Codes. Thank you very much uh, to Ms. Irene Gonzalez Salamat uh, for your kind introduction. Uh, we would like to call this uh, hearing of the Constitutional Amendments Committee of the Senate uh, into order. Uh, we suspended the hearing uh, when we ended our consultations in Cebu uh, last week 
and we are resuming uh, the hearing today here in Cotabato City. Uh, we would like to thank and greet our regional uh, legislative assembly speaker. Thank you, uh, Speaker uh, Rooney Sinzuat. Also, of course, our armed regional government chief of staff, Attorney May Mambuay Kampong, ma'am. Attorney Assistant Cabinet Secretary Ahmad Salik Guru, Attorney Ishak Mastura, our RBOI chairper Chairperson, Dato Ismail Dustin Mastura, our former Vice Governor, Magindanao, Assemblyman uh, Abulalam Padote, Padate, and uh, the Honorable Alexander Menor, students from Cotabato City State Polytechnic College, students from Notre Dame University College of Law, officials and fellow workers in government here in the uh, uh, regional government of the uh, Muslim Mindanao, Mayong Ad Aga, uh, Mayong Buntag, uh, Cotabato City, Assalamu alaikum sa lahat. This is the third uh, hearing of the Senate Committee on Constitutional Amendments outside of Manila, and we intend to have uh, perhaps one, two, or maybe even three more after today. But I must say, and as I was sharing this with our speaker, uh, we were in Cagayan de Oro, we were in Cebu, but the best venue so far for our consultative hearings is here in Cotabato City. Uh, Thank you for hosting us uh, here in SKCC. Thank you for the seventh hearing of the Senate Committee on Constitutional Amendments on the proposals to amend the 1987 Constitution. These are interesting times for the people of Cotabato and the arm as you are faced with two very crucial issues, the Bangsamoro Basic Law and Charter Change. Bangsamoro, Christians, indigenous peoples are at a crossroads between the promise of change and its perils, if gone all right. Several years ago, there were attempts to pass the BBL, but Congress ran out of time. It, is, it has been resurrected, the 17th Congress, with the hope that this would be acted upon favorably to address the pressing issues of the Bangsamoro people. As we tackle BBL, we are also confronted with moves to revise the current 1987 Constitution. Some are of the view that both issues are intertwined and should move at the same path, parallel path, simultaneously. We hope today's discussions will help bring about clarity and will lead to a concrete plan of action that is a product of many voices of the very people who have always aspired for a peaceful and progressive region. We have resource persons invited today, whether for, in favor, or against uh, the charter change. We believe in a democracy that all views should be heard, given the opportunity to be heard and respected. Um, and we believe that when the opposing views are shared and ventilated, only then can our citizens, who in the final analysis will make the decision, only then can they be truly clarified as to the uh, various issues around constitutional change. As in the previous hearings, and I understand our resource persons have been uh, given uh, notice beforehand, We will ask the following questions, and we hope our resource persons can follow uh, by answering them. Una, kailangan bang amyendahin o baguhin ang 1987 Constitution? Pangalawa, kung kailangan, ano ang mga dapat baguhin sa saligang batas at bakit? Pangatlo, Ito ba ay gagawin 
sa pamamagitan ng isang constitutional convention or CONCON o sa pamamagitan ng kongreso mismo bilang isang constituent assembly o CONAS. Ikaapat, kung CONAS ang magaganap, bobota ba ang Senado at ang House of Representatives ng hiwalay o iisa? But we are here in the arm in Cotabato City. Let us also try to discuss and provide answers to these questions. Is the BBL version that we have constitutional? Can it pass constitutional scrutiny? Do we need charter change so that the BBL would be realized in a federal context? What do we need to change in the 1987 Constitution in this regard? How will charter change address the challenges of Mindanao and the arm? Will charter change or federalism be the answer to the region's problems of poverty, lack of jobs and opportunities, lack of access to education, and armed conflict and violence? I am certain we will all agree the goal of charter change should neither be to gratify the political ambitions of the few nor put in place a new oppressive exploitative system, but to rectify and address the underlying problems of the country. The aim should be peace, justice, progress, and prosperity for all. I'm looking forward to hearing the voices of all the people here in Cotabato City and in the arm. Daghang salama. Thank you very much. We will now proceed with our resource persons. Do we have the info? For the record, again, for the record, the following are with us. Um, I cannot. Mr. Timuay Santo Unsad from uh, May we have your group, sir? Justice and Governance. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah. Justice and Governance, Upi Magindanao. We also have Attorney Michael Mastura, uh, former representative, 1st District of Maguindanao and Cotabato City. We have Ms. Giamel Alim, Chairman, Chairperson, Consortium of Bangsamoro Civil Society, Cotabato City. Uh, Secgen Dionato Mokudef. Organization of Tiduray Lambangian Conference Nuro Upi Magindanao, Ms. Froilan Mendoza Lambangian Organization Awang Dos Magindanao, uh, Ms. Sofia Pagital Mindanao People's Caucus, Mr. Pardo Majad Indi Consortium of Bangsamoro Civil Society. Mr. Amir and Dodo, Consortium of Bangsamoro Civil Society. Attorney Mohamed Mokadir, Australia, Notre Dame University College of Law. Attorney Ali Zedni, Ditukalan, Dean, Mindanao State University College of Law. Ms. Romelin Cruz. Of the Alianza ng Mamamayan para sa Karapatang Pantao, Ms. Laida Musa, kilusan ng mga lumalabang mamamayan para sa pagbabago ng bayan or kilos bayan. Uh, we will also acknowledge the presence of other resource persons uh, should they arrive. Um, yes, and from the Assembly, uh, Honorable Padate and Honorable Menor will also be giving their inputs. We shall begin with uh, 
a good friend who I have not seen in uh, quite some time, Attorney Michael Mastura. It's uh, very good to see you, sir. We go back maybe more than two decades. Uh, and I'm very happy to see you here. Uh, we will give you first the floor, Attorney Michael, uh, Mas Ma uh, Attorney Mastura, for your opening, your position paper. You have the floor, sir. Mr. Chairman, Senator uh, Kiko Pangilinan, I'm pleased to respond to your committee's invitation. And personally, as a good friend, I welcome you to my hometown and city. I was asked by your secretary uh, in what capacity will I appear before your committee. I chose to come as former representative, representative of the first district of Maguindanao in Cotabato City because I feel that it would be more relevant to this morning's uh, session. We have not seen each other for quite some time since EDSA. I don't remember anymore, EDSA 1 and EDSA 2. But in those years that I have not been in, seen in public, I served in my capacity as a lawyer at the negotiating table for the MILF on invitation of the late Hashim Salamat, founder of the MILF. I am here to respond to a puzzle about the status of the Bangsamoro people. In 1924, our forefathers made it a point to declare that Bangsamoro as an identity be placed in the constitution of the Philippines. They failed. So 1935 constitution was passed and approved without this aspiration. In the 19, 1973 Constitution, I served as an elected delegate to the 1971 Constitutional Convention, elected and representing a bigger province at the time. Uh, I personally and the late Senator Dumukau Ahmad Alonto, together with Delegate de las Alas, sponsored the federal proposal, the shift to federal form of government. As a congressman, I had occasion to advise later Professor Noliedo in the writing of the Article 10 uh, of the 1987 Constitution. I want to put on record that we want to assert the position of the Bangsamoro people, not just through the BBL. We find a rough sailing for BBL, and I heard the other day a statement by Chairman Murad 
that this BBL proposal could be parked and pending the passage of a federal constitution should we shift to a federal form of government. So that does not still address the question that you raised, Your Honor, this morning. Therefore, I reserve the right to present to your committee and the committee of uh, Senator uh, Miguel uh, Subiri a draft constitution which would be a, an option in direct response to the question of shifting to the federal form of government. I will not present today the short opening statement that I made because I want to respond to what is actually taking place. But with your permission, I want to say that this 1987 constitution, uh, constitution is 30 years old now. I remember that President Aquino wanted me to serve in the CONCON. But there was a rule that if you serve, you will not be allowed to run for a seat in Congress. So I told her very bluntly and frankly that, Mom, I want to serve in Congress and therefore will not be able to serve and thank you for the offer. I mention that because I remember that Senator Opley violated that rule. He not only served in the Constitutional Commission, but also ran for the Senate. I'm trying to drag the dialogue and conversation to the fact that one reason why we would like to see the Constitution amended is because there is no representation in the Senate. There is a flaw in the structure of government, the territorial representation of Bangsamoro people in the Senate is something that we aspire for. It is not possible to elect a senator from among the Moros without assistance, as in the case of Senator Tamano, who was assisted by the First Lady, Imelda Marcos, and that of Senator uh, Rasul. Rasul, Santanina Rasul, with the assistance of President Cory Aquino herself. And the reason is, as you know, Mr. Senator, you start with about 6 million voters from Metro Manila. We Moros start with probably 500,000 votes. And so, mathematically, it is next to impossible to vote for a senator. I'm not arguing for that seat. What I'm arguing for is that this is a core argument. This is a rationale for opening the 1987 Constitution. If only to answer the aspiration of our people. The other, and I will end this presentation, the other, that's why it's an argument, oral argument. The other consideration is 
we went through several negotiations. Martial law was declared at a time when young people decided to take up arms. As of today, we are under martial law. I want you to realize that we, you do not feel the funks of martial law, but we are under martial law. But Marawi, Sambuanga City, Marawi City, two cities, saw a very devastating scenario. I'd like to support the argument of the president that if we do not find constitutional accommodation for the Bangsamoro people, we will see the worst of things to come. More than perhaps Sambuanga City and Marawi City. And we would like to avoid that. And we do not want to see that happen. Therefore, Mr. Chairman, I hope that you will take it seriously that an amendment to the Constitution to accommodate the demands of the Bangsamoro people will be listened to. The argument, pardon, a little extension after all. You have two minutes additional. Uh Yes, Sorry, go ahead. Mr. Chairman. How, if the rest of the nation do not like to go federal? How, if the rest of the nation do not want to change this constitution? At the negotiating table, we have been arguing that what we need is an asymmetrical principle, an asymmetrical arrangement. I coined the word, the, or the phrase, the status quo is unacceptable. And I would like to use that same phrase, the 1987 Constitution as it is now, is unacceptable. Therefore, that moves us to a situation where there will be a constitutional accommodation on the principle of another thing that we borrowed from Spain, from Barcelona. That is the principle of asymmetry. That is already built into this present constitutional convention and I refer to Article 10. So, if the BBL does not pass Congress because of constitutional constraint, that will be the second major argument for amending this constitution. And I blame a little bit the VTC, the Bangsamoro uh, Technical uh, group that drafted the BBL because there is a second mandate. The second mandate is to propose amendment to the Constitution. And that is the reason why I reserve the right of a group I represent, the professional group I'm working with, who will, and as of this point in time, we have a a draft that, to, that is to be reviewed yet by, the, uh, by this uh, study group of professionals and uh, other sectors, and we would like to submit that to you, Mr. Chairman, uh, in not so very long a time. Thank you very much for the extension as well as the privilege to uh, be able to testify here.
Thank you very much, Attorney Mike. Just one quick question uh, uh, to you, sir. Um, if we are to change the charter, would you prefer the constitutional convention, because you were part of a constitutional convention, or would you prefer a constituent assembly? I served in a convention that was elected. That would be the ideal. But because of the expediency of uh, passing something in a very short time, we, I would like to see that the Senate is composed of statesmen. I'd like to see that the members of the House are statesmen. And therefore, uh, we have for the first time a president who comes from Mindanao. There is no reason that you cannot constitutionally accommodate the longings of the Bangsamoro people. So, as it is, there is already a, a momentum. I, I don't want to read what I have written, my good friend, but I said here, uh, it is not a contest between, it is, what, it is not Alvarez versus Pimentel. You know what I mean by that. It is not also sheer numbers. Definitely, that is not the way to amend this constitution. And so, we are pleading to you that if you feel free as a constituent assembly, go ahead. We cannot amend this constitution by public clamor. We should amend it because there is a crisis. And I assume that would be voting separately. A constituent of assembly voting separately. I'm not very sure as a lawyer. I know you are a top notcher. It was the fault of that Kong Kong that they put this dilemma that we have. Uh, out of reality, we would not like the wise senators to be defeated by sheer numbers because yes. the House would vote overwhelmingly and in that sense, all proposals by the Senate will be defeated. I call this the majoritarian rule. The majoritarian rule applies to the Senate. That's why you are small in numbers, but there is a majority there. I'd like to use that majoritarian rule that happened to the BBL. The Supreme Court is another majoritarian rule body. But here is the clue, Mr. Chairman. The decision of the Supreme Court in the case of the indigenous people's uh, rights was resolved by a vote of 8-7 with the Chief Justice breaking the vote. The same thing happened in the MOA AD. In the MOA AD, it was 7-8. Again, a divided court deciding because of the Chief Justice. So, please do not again put us in a situation where there are compromises and we are the victim of that compromise. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much, Attorney Mike. Uh, we would like to acknowledge the presence of our governor, uh, Governor Mujib. Thank you for joining us. Would you like to give us a, a, few, a few remarks? Later, later. Okay. Uh, he will give his uh, oh, uh, 
uh, not his opening remarks, but his uh, later remarks. We will ask him to speak later on. Um, we now have uh, from the Notre Dame University, Attorney Mohamed Estrella uh, from the College of Law. You have the floor, sir. Please uh, proceed. Yes, Honorable Chairperson, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. On behalf of the Notre Dame University College of Law, I would like to extend our gratitude to the Honorable Chairperson of the Senate Committees on Constitutional Amendments and Revisions of Codes and Electoral Reforms and People's Participation for giving us the opportunity to participate in today's regional consultative hearing on the proposed bills to change the 1987 Philippine Constitution. Specifically, we were asked to give our policy positions on, on the following questions. Whether or not there is a need to amend or revise the Constitution. If yes, what parts of the Constitution should be amended or revised? Should the amendments and revisions be proposed by a constitutional convention or by the Congress itself acting as a constituent assembly? And should Congress convene as, and should Congress convene as a constituent assembly? Should they vote jointly or separately? Also earlier, um, the good senator asked us about the constitutionality of the ba draft Bangsamoro basic law and should there be a need to actually amend or revise the constitution to accommodate the passage of the Bangsamoro basic law. But uh, your, uh, your Honor, uh, but before forwarding our considered opinions on the foregoing matters and with your indulgence, I would like to place on record the significance of the 1987 Philippine Constitution in a Republican democratic state like the Philippines and why there is a need to exercise the highest form of diligence available in attempting to revise or amend the same. The 1987 Philippine Constitution is first and foremost the expression of the sovereign will of the Filipino people as the same was ratified in a national referendum on February 2, 1987. With the great and vast powers granted to a state by virtue of generally accepted principles under international law, the Constitution serves as our social contract with the government. It protects us from potential abuses of the government. It provides for mechanisms to ensure public accountability of those serving in the government, from the president down to, the, down to our honest and hardworking rank and file employees. It guarantees our right to democratically choose the leaders who we think will best represent our values and who we are as a nation. And it also works to ensure that future generations, that our children and our children's children would live to have a healthy and balanced environment. As what we saw in the landmark case of Aposa versus Factoran, when the Supreme Court held that the constitutional provision pertaining to the protection and promotion of the environment is in fact self-executory. The reason why I wanted to highlight these matters is for us to be reminded that when we seek to amend or revise the 1987 Philippine Constitution, we are also shaping the course of our nation and the future of our children. So in attempting to do so, it is our highest hopes that our legislators do it with the best intentions, having in mind the things that are truly at stake in this enterprise. We have to be reminded of our obligation that amending or revising the Constitution should be made beyond the halls of political affiliations and patronage politics. Having established these, uh, Your Honors, I would now want to proceed to answer whether or not there is a need to amend or revise the Constitution. As we know, and for the benefit or of the younger audience at the back, there is a difference between amendment and revision. Revision entails substantial changes in the Constitution. Having gone through the various bills filed before both the Senate and the House of Representatives, we are yet to see a version that is necessary, beneficial, and practical all at the same time. While the idea of granting more autonomy to the proposed states under a federal form of government is enticing, especially since we are a country blessed with diverse cultures and ethnicities, almost all of the present bills are characterized by legal loopholes which will open the floodgates for abuse of power and lack of public accountability. Specifically, and just to cite an example, Your Honor, there is a version of the bill that splits the Supreme Court of the power to acquire jurisdiction over cases of grave abuse of discretion amounting to lack or excess of jurisdiction. In a country where authorities may always abuse their powers, 
We cannot afford to lose provisions that promote checks and balances between and among the co-equal branches of the government. Further, Your Honor, most of the criticisms against the 1987-38 Constitution are, as a matter of fact, questions of implementation and not questions pertaining to the substance of the 1987-38 Constitution per se. This leads us to the conclusion that at the moment, there is no need to revise the Constitution. Amending some of its provisions, however, is another issue. Your Honor, in particular, Article 2, Section 26 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution provides that the state shall guarantee equal access to opportunities for public service and prohibit political dynasties as may be defined by law. However, this provision remains to this day as non self executory without its enabling law. While I understand that the good Senator, Senator Pangalinan, has a proposed bill that seeks to define political dynasty in hopes to put an end to decades of oligarchic politics in the Philippines, we know in the legal profession that a legislative act, such as a law or a statute, is subject to amendments by future Congresses. As such, it is our humble submission that political dynasty should instead be clearly defined in the Constitution so as to finally prohibit the same. With due respect to the Senators and the members of the House of Representatives, it is hard to imagine a Congress that is dominated by individuals coming from known political families to enact a law that is contrary to their self-interests. Moreover, it bears reiteration that even when an anti-political dynasty law is already enacted, the threat that it can always be amended and watered down by Congress will always be there. Panahon na po para magkaroon ng, bat ng batas na tunay na magbibigay ng garantiya at oportunidad para sa bawat Pilipino na lumahok sa halalan at mabigyan tayo ng oportunidad na pumili ng mga leader na magtataguyod ng totoong pagbabago. A change that will not only work for a few people but a change that will genuinely cater to the interest of the Filipino people. Your Honor, as to the question of whether or not it should be made... Um, should there be constitutional amendment or revision, uh, whether it's constitutional convention or constitutional assembly, um, Your Honor, I, I, I would like to refer to the historical perspective. It bears emphasis that in our experience revising our past constitutions, we have always resorted to form a constitutional convention. For purposes of our 1935 and 1973 constitutions, we have elected our delegates to sit as members of the constitutional convention. Our 1987 Philippine Constitution was also drafted by members of then Constitutional Convention, composed of the best legal minds in the country. Knowing fully well that the Constitution will govern us and will ultimately affect our way of life as a people. Respectfully, it is thereby submitted that resort to the creation of a Constitutional Convention is more in keeping with our democratic history and democratic values as a nation. Now, in case of a Constituent Assembly, the question is whether or not the Senate and the House of Representatives should vote jointly or separately. There is wisdom behind the fact that the framers of the 1987 Philippine Constitution intended to have a bicameral Congress that is one composed of the Senate and the House of Representatives. Impliedly, Your Honor, this means that the general rule is to respect the bicameral nature of Congress and the, and the opposite as its exception. It is by this proposition that it, is our intent, uh, that it is our considered opinion that absent a clear provision that states that the Senate and the House of Representatives should, vo uh, should vote jointly should they be constituted as a constituent assembly, we submit that the two houses should vote separately in recognition of their separate rep representations in Congress. Finally, Your Honor, if I may be allowed to be given addition a few more minutes here uh, to discuss about the constitutionality of the BBL. You have uh, two minutes. Go ahead, sir. Okay, thank you, uh, good senator. Um, the question is whether or not the, BB, the present draft of the BBL is constitutional and whether or not there is a need to change or amend the constitution to accommodate the draft BBL. Um, Your Honor, it is our submission that the draft Bangsamoro Basic Law, specifically the version of the BTC, the Bangsamoro Transition Commission, is constitutional under the 1987 Philippine Constitution. Hence, there is no need for a charter change to have it enacted into a law. The main contentions, Your Honor, is that 1. The 1987 Philippine Constitution only allows for a presidential form of government. However, the presidential form of government merely pertains to the national government.
government. Under Article 10 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution, uh, which, uh, in which the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao finds its legal basis, there is no prescribed form of government. So it is our submission that a parliamentary form of government under the draft BBL, the BTC version, can actually be held constitutional. And second, um, Your Honor, there is also contention that it merely creates the same entity under the 2018 Memorandum of Agreement on Ancestral Domain, which was held unconstitutional by the Supreme Court in the case of the province of North Cotabato versus the government of the Philippines. Uh, it is our submission that unlike that, uh, the MOA AD, which is very general and broad, uh, in, the proposed, uh, in the draft BBL, BTC version, there are clear provisions as to the relationship between the central government on one hand and the Bangsamoro political entity on, an, uh, on the other. So there are clear distinctions between the two. Lastly, I would like to respectfully place it on record that the draft BBL, while the same primarily seeks to address the problems and issues regarding the Bangsamoro people, it is not just for us, Your Honor, the Bangsamoro, but it is for every Filipino. Para po sa atin, para po, ba, para po lahat sa atin yung Bangsamoro. To rectify yung BBL, to rectify the historical injustices committed against the Bangsamoro people is to serve justice to the entire Filipino as a nation. In reality, we can only truly grow as a nation when our political, cultural, and economic system is inclusive even of those who live within the margins, especially of those who live within the margins. With that, I end my position. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, Attorney Estrella. Ang susunod, uh, Deonato Mokudef. Kayo po ang uh, from the indigenous peoples groups. Yeah, uh, good day to all. At uh, first, uh, we would like to extend our gratitude to our uh, beloved regional governor of Autonomous Regional Muslim Mindanao, Mojib Sataman, for to be a part, you know, one, one of the hundreds and thousands of moral leaders in pushing responsive and good governance in Autonomous Regional Muslim Mindanao. And of course, Your Honor, uh, we would like to extend our thank uh, from your court fees for, for inviting us to give inputs and uh, recommendations. <laughs> in the proposed uh, uh, change of the 1987 constitutions. Uh, considering the time constraints, Your Honor, uh, our group uh, conducted a meeting until uh, 12 midnight, uh, <clears throat> just only to draft a strong positions addressed to your good office in support of the call of the good presidents to change the constitutions. Uh, and I quote, uh, we, the indigenous people in the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao, uh, and uh, it to happen in the core territory of the proposed Bansamoro governance, are very supportive in the call of our honorable, uh, of our good president, President Roa Duterte, to change the constitutions through your good office, uh, through the good, good office of the uh, steam member of the upper house. Honorable Kiko Pangilinan to change the 1987 constitutions. Uh, in this regards, we strongly call and demand uh, to our Bill of Presidents through the steam member of the Upper House, Honorable Kiko Pangilinan, that your persons committee on constitutional change to include some constitutional provisions, optimistic constitutional provisions of the 1987 constitution mandated for the sustainable protections, recognitions, protections, and promotions of life, property, custom, and traditions, and ancestral domains of indigenous people, enumerated within the framework of the existing 1919 constitutions. And I would like, Your Honor, I would like to read uh, some uh, optimistic provisions which is in, enumerated in the 1987 constitutions. First, the state shall uh, recognize, protect, and promote all the rights of indigenous peoples, indigenous cultural communities within the framework of the national unity and development. And second, the state shall take measure with the participation of the indigenous peoples, indigenous cultural communities concerned to protect the rights and guarantee respect uh, for their cultural integrity to ensure the members of the IP, ICCs benefit on the equal footing from the rights and opportunities which national laws in ulit, in ulit ko, national laws and regulations grants to other members of the populations of the race of the Filipino. 
of the Philippines. And thirdly, uh, toward this end, the state shall, shall institute and establish the necessary mechanism to enforce and guarantee the realizations of these rights, taking into consideration their customs, traditions, values, belief, interest, and institution, and to adopt and implement measures to protect their distinct rights in, within their ancestral domain. And therefore, Honorable Your Honor, we strongly recommend uh, to your committee, being the committee head in the constitutional change, um, to amend or add to amend the section 1 to section 15 of article 10 that provides the constitutional basis of the existing of the two autonomous regions in the Philippines which has a special protections and attentions add for a special attentions and protections for the IPs, ICCs that there's a need to have a special administrative region for the indigenous people in pursuit of local autonomy national unity, lasting peace, responsive and good governance, and sustainable development within the Southern Philippines. Your Honor, there's uh, no other has a legal authority and, and uh, legal, legal authority and mandate to articulate fundamental issues and uh, fundamental issues and concerns of indigenous people to need to meet their needs and desires and aspiration except us except indigenous people who has the very wide expertise knowledge and experience in pushing their uh, very responsive pluralist system in asserting more responsive and good governance within our regions uh, your honor with regards to the questions of uh, what are the framework in amending the constitution it's either con us or con con uh, according to our group, we propose CONCON in amending the Constitution because you are living in a highly democratic country. In a sense, uh, democratic country is always the will of the people will become the supreme law. And I quote for the Latin word, post populis restricto. That means will the, the people will become the supreme law. But uh, that is an irregular process, uh, which we do not know because of the time constraints. Uh, and now we are now uh, give to the upper house and lower house because the 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 the, the word Congress of the Philippines co are the represent representations or representatives of the people means the upper house and lower house has the legal authority in amending the constitutions because uh, uh, they are the representative of the people. Your Honor, we have the we have the documents in here for the record. We would like to. Uh, pass it uh, your good office as a reference as an official reference uh, in your efforts uh, of having series of public hearing in determining whether uh, it's a time to fight to, to amend the 1987 constitution or not. Thank you very much and for your budget. Maraming salamat Ginoong Mokodef. May we request uh, attorneys Mastura in Australia as well as uh, uh, Mr. Mokodev, to, sub to submit your uh, written uh, statements so that uh, it can form part of the uh, records and uh, uh, of the committee. Um, do we go on uh, a break? Because it's now... I know, it's not prayer break. Uh, prayer break? So it's 11.50. We will have a prayer break at 12. So we can still have one more, one more uh, resource person. Can we have Miss Laida Musa? Uh, before we go on the break, ma'am, you have the floor for your uh, position uh, paper and your statement. Go ahead, ma'am. Hello. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. To committee chairs and members of constitutional amendments and revision of codes, an electoral reform and people participation, Senate of the Republic of the Philippines. Honorable Francis Pangilinan, sir. Pagbati po ng kalayaan at pakikisa. Kami ay nagpapasalamat na nabigyan ng pagkakataon na maipahayag ang aming posisyon bilang mga sektor 
na mayroon ding malaking taya sa usaping kapayapaan, kaunlaran at demokrasya sa ating lipunan. Ang Kilos Bayan po ay isang koalisyon mula sa iba't ibang waralitang sektor sa lungsod ng Cotabato at probinsya ng Maguindanao. Noong edineglara po ang batas militar sa buong Mindanao. Wala po sa loob po ng pitong buwan ay wala kaming nagawa kahit ayaw namin. Mas pinahaba pa ito ngayon at pasan namin ang epekto nito hanggang katapusan ng taon. At kami ay nababahala na baka mas pahabain pa ulit. Ang epekto po ng train law at muling pagbukas sa usaping death penalty at pagbaba ng edad ng mga kabataang nakagawa ng krimen or lowering the age of criminal, criminal responsibility. Ito ay mukha ng kapangyarihan ng kasalukuyang administrasyon sa loob ng saligang batas. Ngayon naman, mabilis na itinulak ang pagbabago ng saligang batas upang bigyang daan ang federalismo kaysa isa batas ang Bangsamoro Basic Law na matagal nang hinihingi ng Mindanao. Ayon sa aming pag-aaral sa mga panukala, aming nakita na ang pagbabago ng saligang batas ay hindi upang tugunan ang pangangailangan ng mga mamamayang maralita. Mas matingkad ang mga panukalang baguhin ang mga protectionist economic provision at political sa 1987 Constitution upang ganap na buksan ang ating merkado, ekonomiya at mga natitirang likas na yaman sa pagsasamantala ng mga lokal at banyagang mamumuhunan sa pangalan ng mga malayang kalakalan. Kami ay naniniwala na sa pagbabago ng mga nasabing economic provision Mawawala ng sandigan at kalasag ang mga mamamayan upang protektahan ang kanilang mga interes mula sa ragasan ng mga kapitalismo na siyang maghahati-hati sa mga natitirang likas na yaman at lupain ng mamamayan, lalo na po ang mga katutubo. Ang federalismo po ay malayo sa ordinaryong kaisipan ng mga Pilipinong biktima ng mga kabagong batas at malinaw na ito ay muka ng neoliberal. Kaya ayaw na po namin ipagkatiwala sa kanila ang pag-ukit ng kinabukasan ng bayan sa pamamamagitan ng pagbabago ng pangunahing batas ng lupain. Hindi rin namin nararamdaman ang pangangailangan na baguhin ang konstitusyon sa ilalim ng administrasyong ito. Sapagat nakita ang problema ay nasa sistema at kakulangan ng kakayahan upang ganap na ipatupad ang ating saligang batas. Kung kaya, sir, kami po sa Kilos Bayan ay... Ayaw po namin ang charter change, tumututol po kami na baguhay ng ating saligang batas. Dahil sa tingin namin ang 1987 Constitution ay hindi perpekto, subalit ito ay magandang dokumento ng kasaysayan at nagsasalamin sa mga mithiin ng sambayan ng Pilipino na hanggang ngayon po ay wala pa rin katuparan. At ang pagbabago nito ayon sa mga nakabimbing panukala sa Kongreso ay hindi garantiya na ang mga mitiing ito ay maisa sa katuparan. Bagkus po, kami ay nananawagan na bakit hindi na lang po ipasa ang anti-dynasty law, Bangsamoro Basic Law, at patuloy na paglaguin pa po ang Local Government Code at kilalanin at suportahan po natin ang customary law and self-governance ng indigenous people o ang mga katutubo na siyang sa aming tingin ay mga susi sa pagbabago at kaunalan ng ating lipunan. Kung sakali man po na baguhin o mabago ang ating konstitusyon, pabor po kami sa Constitutional Assembly. Yun lamang po. Maraming salamat. Constitutional Conventions. Constitutional Conventions. Yes, sir. Okay. Maraming salamat. Uh, baka lumampas kasi doon sa five minutes. Kaya pa isa? Okay, we will have one more. Uh, attorney, Mr. Timuay Santo Unsad, you have the floor, sir. Salamat po. Um, Magalagmaga, um, uh, kagalanggalang na senador, uh, Kiko Pangilinan. Ako po ay kumakatawan sa mga indigenous peoples dito sa loob ng Bangsamoro area. Um... Ang tingin po namin sa 1987 Philippine Constitution ay isang social justice constitution sapagkat uh, ang uh, rights ng mga indigenous peoples ay malinaw na nakasaad dito sa 1987 Philippine Constitution. Uh, sa aming pag-uusap sa iba't ibang leader katutubo sa buong Pilipinas, sapagkat matagal na po na umugong 
ang uh, planong pag amenda or pag uh, revise sa ating Philippine Constitution ang matingkad na kasagutan ng iba't ibang leader katutubo sa buong Pilipinas ay hindi. Wala pong amendment o walang revision na dapat gagawin sapagkat nangangamba po ang mga leader katutubo kung ito ay bubuksan sa amendment or revision ng ating Constitution. Maaaring mawala po ang apat na article at apat na seksyon sa Philippine Constitution na nag-provide ng rights ng mga indigenous peoples. Kaya po, um, matingkad po ang pagtutol ng mga leader katutubo sa buong Pilipinas na mindahan o uh, revise ang ating Constitution. Subalit kung talagang extremely difficult sa inyo na may wasan ang pag-revise o pag uh, ang hiningi po namin ay um, surgical, hindi po yung uh, revision. Ang um, gusto po namin kung surgical, i-amend lang po yung Article 10, uh, Section 1, na dapat ang political and territorial uh, uh, units ng ating pamahalaan ay kasama yung mga ancestral domain ng mga katutubo. Hindi lang po yung barangay, hindi lang munisipyo, hindi lang probinsya. Dapat kasama po na may lagay na bilang political unit yung mga ancestral domain ng mga indigenous peoples. Uh, kung hindi pa talagang may wasan na isurgical lang, kung talagang gusto nyong i-revise, ang gagawin na uh, federal yung sistema. Ang aming rekomendasyon din po ay ang mga political units so politika mga ancestral domain ng mga indigenous peoples ay gagawing autonomous political units. Ibig sabihin po ang bawat ancestral domain ng mga katutubo ng more than 100 na mga etniko ng mga katubo sa buong Pilipinas ay mga autonomous political units. At sa katanungan kung um, uh, pwede ba yung Constitutional Convention or Constituent Assembly, kami po ay tututol sa Constituent Assembly. Ang aming gusto po ay Constitutional Convention para may May pagkakataon kaming pumili ng aming mga kinatawan doon sa Constitutional Convention. Um, nang sa gayon ay makapagpili kami ng aming champion na magdadala sa aming mga boses doon sa convention. At bilang panghuli po, uh, kung papayagan ba na may hiwalay na pagboto uh, ang uh, Senate at ang Kongreso, uh, ako pa itututol na gawing isa lang yung uh, pagboto ng dalawang kapulungan. Sapagkat mawawala po yung rights ng uh, Senate, ng mga members ng mga Senate na boboto na ayon sa kanilang kagustuhan. Sapagkat minority lang po sila, 24, out of more than 200 congressmen. Eh mawawala po yung uh, sentiment ng mga senator kung magboto po sila ng, ng isa lang sapagkat marami yung uh, mga congressmen at uh, hindi na mapakinggan yung boses ng mga senator. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat, Ginoong Monsad. With that, we will uh, suspend uh, this committee hearing and go into a break and we will resume uh, the hearing uh, by 12.30. So this committee hearing is suspended. Public hearing. And we are now on the consultative hearing portion. And uh, we have Senator uh, Francisco Kiko Pangilinan as uh, chair of uh, the committee on, the, of course, no, uh, constitutional amendments and revision of codes. So, uh, sir, I'll turn over the, uh, the floor to you, sir. Thank you.
Thank you, thank you very much. We would like to resume the hearing of the Constitutional Amendments Committee of the Senate uh, is hereby resumed. We can now proceed with our next resource person from um, the MSU. Uh, Attorney Dito Kalan, you have the floor, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, Your Honor. Uh, it's a, um, a singular privilege to be speaking before this uh, most August assembly. Um, I was asked to, I was tasked to ask, to mean rather to answer four questions. Um, uh, is there a need to amend or revise the Constitution? Why or why not? And the other three questions. But before that, I'd like to uh, put on record uh, the importance of this process and that uh, the opportunity to be able to uh, participate in, in this um, uh, hearing. Uh, because um, I do believe, and among constitutional designers and constitutionalists, that uh, the most, as a matter of fact, the most important part of a constitution is its amendatory provisions. Uh, starting with uh, the work of, um, the work of um, um, John Borges, when he considered that the most important part of the constitution was actually its formal constitution Null amendment rules. And this was followed by subsequent um, constitutional scholars who have considered that uh, the amendatory rules is considered the unsurpassed importance of a constitution. Unfortunately, the, the way the 1987 constitution is now written uh, is ambiguous. And this leads to disagreement, as a matter of fact, by the houses of Congress and the, the Senate. Um, Your, Your Honor, um, the first question is, to, to my mind, uh, is very important even before we tinker the 1987 constitutions. Uh, but beyond asking whether it is really necessary to amend the constitutions, is we, we should reflect on the reality. We should look beyond uh, our border. We have to consider co global constitutionalism in tinkering the 1987 constitutions. We have to consider the economic gains that our country has already obtained. Uh, we have to consider what are the social goals, what are the political goals, what are the economic and uh, other goals that need to be addressed uh, even before we pursue constitutional reform. I would like to use the term constitutional reform because of the ambiguity and the apparent lack of clarity of the use of amendment and revisions under the 1987 Constitution. And so, uh, Your Honor, uh, and, and as it is a matter of the, uh, theory, uh, amending the Constitution is a matter of personal judgment. And so we should reflect on whether amending the Constitution would to be relevant, to, in order for our country to address the, the, uh, the um, eventual ASEAN economic integrations, in order also for us to address the Bangsamoro questions. And so because you've asked us about the constitutionality of the Bangsamoro, and I'd like to take this opportunity to reread a paper that was published by the Korean Legislation Research Institute when they asked me to, to discuss the constitutional ramifications of the Bangsamoro Basic Law. And if, if, if you would indulge me, Your Honor, just please, read, please that I will just read uh, what I call the road of better constitutionalism. The establishment of Bangsamoro within the context of Basic Law does not aim to dismember or divide the Philippine territory, but it is rather a recognition of the unique and valid aspiration of the Bangsamoro, whose system of governance is older than the constitutional democracy of the Philippines. And to prevent them, the Bangsamoro, from charting their own future within the context of their unique aspiration as a Bangsamoro or a nation, is repugnant to the mandate of the Constitution in establishing an autonomous government for the people of Muslim Mindanao, which share 
common and distinctive historical and cultural heritage, economic and social structure, and other relevant characteristics. To say that it is established to, to say that its establishment is repugnant to the constitution and the territorial integrity of the Philippines is a disconnect to the reality that the hostilities in Mindanao is beyond constitutional discourse. It also violates the notion that fundamental law is a living document that guides every nation in charting its future. A constitution is aptly described as the imprisonment of the past and the embodiment of the future. It is also the fulfillment of the present, as Justice Isagani Cruz added. Justice Cruz wrote, and this is so fami uh, 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 very familiar to, to law students, yet all for all its relative untouchability, there is no doubt that it cannot remain a fortified document governing it with its sacrosanct precept adopted 100 years ago, a much altered society, 100 years later. The race moves forward constantly, so it has been said, and no canoe can stay its progress. The Constitution must remain a vibrant instrument that adjusts to the changes of a society that cannot stand still. There is no debate that the Constitution is a fundamental law which all must bow to its majesty. Of course, the bill is not remiss in discharging that, as in fact, it has been too redundant in saying within the framework of the Constitution. We are failing to recognize that it is the Congress of the Philippines that is enacting the law, not the Bank Samoro. Thus, it is within the constitutional process. To be too legalistic about the proposed bill is departing from the very nature of laws are made. It detaches us from the philosophy of the law. We are giving more importance to opinions and perceptions about the law than answering its primary purpose or the nature of the law. Why is there a need for the law? Robert E. Rodge in his book, Schools of Jurisprudence, eloquently says, law is embedded in many ways in the texture of life. It is quite natural, therefore, that people who reflect of the law should look to other disciplines to fill out the texture. And in our search of the true meaning of the law, we cannot depart from history. In the final analysis, and as Congress deliberates on the bill, it is not the answer uh, the question is not, it is not, it is not the answer to whether it is constitutional or not, but rather it is the answer to whether the Bangsamoro Basic Law or the Basic Law for the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in, in the answer is the answer to the Bangsamoro question that is more vital in the process of legislating the bill. Justice, ben, uh, Justice Benjamin Cardozo of the U.S. Supreme Court once said, the aim that shelters for the night is not the journey, yes, it's not the journey's end. The Constitution, like the traveler, must be ready for the morrow. Indeed, Your Honor, the right to peace is a birthright. It is an aspiration of constitutionalism. Uh, thank you, uh, Dean. Dean, you have additional minute or so. I gave uh, the others additional time. If you wish to uh, add to what you have uh, read, please go ahead. You have another two minutes. Thank you, uh, Your Honor. I'd like to uh, answer the, the questions that was actually um, um, uh, that you propounded of what shall we take, uh, whether amendment or, I mean, whether, uh, uh, what shall we, uh, rather if, what shall we take, uh, constitutional convention or um, constituent assembly? Um, my take on this is we should look into what shall we do. Is it really constitutional amendment or revision? And like in other constitutional democracies where they have this what they call uh, in, in, entrenchment or what they call eternity clauses that limit uh, the coverage of amendment. But in our 1987 constitution, it does not provide for these limitations. Although it does mention amendment or revision, but it did not actually define or it did not limit and so we go to what I call implicit limitation rule and, and as in the deliberations that amendment will have only to address certain provisions and that revision is changing the entire system. To my mind, um, uh, Your Honor, if we will go to revising the constitutions, I believe that uh, it is better that we bring this to the people through constitutional, con through convention because this is an exercise of constituent power. 
and and among constitutional scholars, constitutional designers, and and their view is that if you're going to change the form of government, the right mode of changing the form of government is going back to where constitute constituent power resides, and I believe it is with the people. Converting the, the, the Congress into constituent assembly to my mind, uh, uh, if we will change the constitutions, will not, be, uh, will not be more objective, if, unlike if you take it into constitutional convention. Although if you're going to amend the constitution, I am for the Congress to do it because it's more efficient. You need to, to address these provisions uh, uh, efficiently. But if you're going to change the form of government, I believe it's better that we address this to the people so that the, the, the people again can really properly choose their representative in changing this uh, uh, 1987 constitution. So that's my view, Your Honor. Thank you, thank you. Just to just to clarify very quickly, uh, revising the Constitution means changing, you know, making major changes. And because these are major changes, uh, a convention would be more appropriate, more democratic, more participatory. Because, uh, well, assuming it's an election, you know, we will elect delegates to a constitutional convention. So the citizens, there will be a campaign. So these, de these uh, candidate delegates will go around the district saying, I'm running for convention delegate. And these are the issues that I believe should be, should be debated in the changing of the constitution. So ang mga mamamayan, nakikita yun, naririnig yun, participatory yun, kasama sila sa pagpapasa kung sino ang uupo. Tapos, siyempre, magde-debate. Habang dine-debate, namomonitor ng ating mga kababayan. And then eventually, of course, ibabalik sa taong bayan yung resulta at yung taong bayan ang magpapasa. So, pagka-revision, ang sinasabi, mas mabuti kung convention dahil kasama lahat at malaki ang major ang changes. Pero kung amendment, halimbawa, uh, imbis na one six-year term ang presidente under our constitution, uh, ang proposed amendment, two four-year terms. Simple lang. In this case, uh, it's very simple. People's participation is not as, how do you call it, hindi ganun kabigat. Kasi nga, ang Iisipin lang ng tao, ng ating mga kababayan, as is, six years, o four years plus another four. So, hindi komplikado. Therefore, pwedeng con us, senador at congressman, ang magsasabi, ito ang proposed amendment, isusumiti ngayon sa mga kababayan natin, eh, hindi malaking tinatalakay dito, hindi federalismo na medyo malalit, medyo malawak, malaking usaklaw. Kaya okay lang na isang amendment. Parang ganun, no? That, that's what I understand. That's my view, uh, Your Honor. Thank you, thank you, uh, Dean. We now have uh, Ms. Romelin Cruz ng Alyansa ng Mga Mamamayan para sa Karapatang Panta. Ma'am, you have the floor. Uh, isang mapagpalayang hapon sa ating lahat, lalong-lalo na sa butihing panauhin na si Sen. Uh, Francis Pangilinan at sa lahat ng dumalo sa pagtitipo na ito. Lubos kaming nagpapasalamat na ang AMKP ay nabigyan ng napakahalagang oportunidad na maibahagi namin ang aming posisyon. Uh, committee Chairs and Members, uh, Committees on Constitutional Amendments and Revision of Codes and Electoral Reforms and People's Participation, Senate of the Republic of the Philippines. Makatarungang konstitusyon, karapatan ng bawat mamamayan. Panindi, uh, panindigan ng aliansa ng mamamayan para sa karapatan pangtao sa usaping charter change. Kagalang-galang na senador, ang aliansa ng mamamayan para sa karapatan pangtao, EMKP, ay suportado ang lahat ng hakbang ng pamahalaan na sumusulong sa kapakanan 
at nagpoprotekta sa karapatan ng bawat mamamayan. Mamamayan dito, lalong-lalo na sa mga mahihirap nating kababayan. Subalit bilang alyansa ng mga organisasyon at individual sa Cotabato City at probinsya ng Maguindanao na nagsusulong sa karapatang pantao, alam namin, alam namin ang kasalukuyang hakbang para baguhin ang saligang batas ng Pilipinas ay hindi kumikiling sa, pang, pa, sa pa, pangangailangan at hindi tumutugon sa tunay na suliranin ng mga nakakar, nakararaming tao sa ating lipunan. Naniniwala kami na hindi ito ang pangunahing paraan para tugunan ang, ang kasalukuyang umiiral na suliranin sa kahirapan, kabuhayan, kawalan ng hustisya sa mga kriming nagaganap at maging ang masamang pagtrato sa mga kababaihan. Kami ay naniniwala na ang tanging saklaw sa pagbago ng saligang batas ay ang mag mabigyang katwiran at mabigyang daan ang interes ng iilan na, kab na nakabasi sa yaman at kapangyarihan. Sa pagkakataong ito, mas lalong maghihikahos at mamumulubi sa pagtamasa sa kanilang mga karapatan ang mga vulnerabling sektor ng ating lipunan katulad ng mga maliliit na magsasaka, mangingisda, manggagawa, kababaihan, kabataan at iba, at iba pa na patuloy na nagdurusa sa araw-araw na epekto ng kontraktualisasyon sa paggawa at extractive industries, malalaking plantasyon pang agrikultura at pagsapribado ng mga serbisyong sosyal. Dagdag pa dito ang pangmatagalang epekto ng trade law. Your Honor, kami ay nangangamba na sa pagbago ng saligang batas ay tuluyan na mawalan ang mga vulnerabling sektor ng ating lipunan na sa kanilang karapatang mabuhay ng marangal at may dignidad. Naninindigan po kami panatilihin ang kasalukuyang saligang batas ng ating bansa. Minumungkahi po namin palawigin pa ang pagpapatibay dito sa pamamagitan ng pagsak Uh, pagsakatuparan sa mga kasalukuyang batas na nakakabuti sa karamihan at sa pagbago ng mga batas na hindi naaayon sa interes ng karamihan. Kami po ay naniniwala na tanging ang saligang batas ang masasandalan ng mga ordinaryong mamamayan sa panahon ng kagipitan at pag-abuso pag ng kanilang karapatan. Umaasa po kami na kayo ay gagawa ng hakbang, hakbang ayon sa tunay na pangailangan ng karamihan, karamihan at hindi ng ihilan lamang. Kung sakali mang baguhin ang konstitusyon, pabor kami sa constitutional convention. Maraming salamat. Maraming salamat, uh, Ms. Romelin Cruz. Uh, ang susunod, Assemblyman... Uh, Lalam, Padate. You have the floor, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Salamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. This is actually the position of uh, the Regional Legislative Assembly of the ARMF, and I believe uh, this was already submitted to the Secretariat, and uh, I will just read this. Uh, Please lack, proceed. Lack of material time. Uh, the questions, along with the succeeding ones, is reflected in the letter of the Honorable Committee Chair. We refer to the members of the Regional Legislative Assembly with the purpose of coming up with a collegial or common stand. And uh, to me, personally, you know, uh, the Constitution, although the highest law of the land, should not be treated as a sacred document that stands the test of time. Uh, it needs changes. It needs change. Society is changed, and so should our laws. From the time we witnessed the first ray of, of light to this time, we remain as a developing country at its best. Our economic development has been a turtle, turtle paste. The search for a meaningful peace remains an elusive dream. We do not want to attribute these misfortunes, however, to the present form of government. Yet, notwithstanding the governmental powers concentrated in the central government, this type of government still fails to bring our country where it should be at this period of history. This holds especially true in the countryside and in the Mindanao Islands. The study also shows that most of the countries run under federal system are enjoying more economic progress and living in an atmosphere of peace and stability. Thus, 
We must take this opportune time to afford our regions more freedom to govern them themselves with much less interference from the central government and in harmony with the real sentiments and aspirations of the people in each region by amending or perhaps revising our constitution, whichever is best. On the question that what parts of the constitution should be amended, we respectfully submit I will respectfully suggest that those constitutional provisions dealing with the structure of government and the location of governmental powers with the coverage of the amendment or revision. Thus, those parts of the Constitution which enshrined the Bill of Rights and those pertaining to the constitutional bodies must be retained with some modifications, if necessary, as Congress and the Constitutional Convention may see it fit. Now, as to whether or not uh, to whom we shall the question was, to whom shall we entrust the task of amending or revising the Constitution? It is uh, our humble submission that the Consultative Commission would be better in case of uh, amendment. I respectfully uh, agree or subscribe to the idea of the, the Dean that in case of uh, amendment, the Constitutional Convention would be uh, favorable to us. No? Because uh, the arm or the Bank Samoro has less than 15 representatives in Congress out of the 321 legis legislators, including the Senate. The Bank Samoro, Bank Samoro's voice will surely be drowned if it will be in a constitutional assembly. Walang bosses kasi ilan lang kami. However, in, in case of a constitutional convention, we would be electing our own champions and perhaps uh, they can bring the voice of the Bank Samoa in the Constitutional Convention. Now, how shall Congress vote? Separately or jointly? I subscribe to the... This is personal to me. I just... I subscribe to the position, but this is actually similar with the position of the RLA. But I subscribe to the position of former Chief Justice Hilario Davide and, and uh, Father Joaquin Bernas, that Senate and the House of Representatives should vote separately since the Constitution does not state that they should be in a joint session in the Constitution. And uh, same argument, surely the voice of the Senate will be drowned in, in Congress in view of the numbers of the uh, members of the House of Representatives. Now, uh, Yes, the, in addition there to Your Honor, the Regional Legislative Assembly respectfully submit that the Senate and the House of Representatives must vote separately. It is similar, as I have said, following the opinions of retired Supreme Court Justice Dante Otinga and uh, former Senator uh, Aquilino Nene Pimentel. Now, uh, on, on, on the issue of whether or not the BBL is constitutional, this is personal to me because it was it, it was not part of the position paper of the RLA. I respectfully submit that BBL is constitutional. It is not repugnant to the provisions of the uh, uh, Philippine Constitution, 1987 Constitution. It can be passed and it can be implemented uh, without the need of amending or perhaps revising the, the provisions of the Constitution. Uh, in fact, uh, Yes, that is our, uh, that is personal to me. And in fact, I, I, I as a Bank Samoro and member of the Regional Legislative Assembly, as representative of my region, I mean, my, my, my district, I am actually uh, in favor of having a BBL first as means of transition uh, before the federal, before a shift to federal uh, form of government. Because that way, we'll be able to govern ourselves and if, 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 uh, the elected officials of the, the Bank Samoro government will let them on find that uh, we would be, our, our, the, the region would be better in, yes, under a uh, BBL government, but perhaps you can stay with it and perhaps uh, later on uh, <laughs> join the federal, uh, federal state. Now, uh, my, my time is up, but may I ask for a word? Yes, please, you have an uh, additional two minutes. Uh, go ahead, sir. Yes, actually my, my position is done with this, but did, I, I'll take this opportunity to bring to your attention that yesterday, the, the sentiment of the 
rank and file employees of the arm in relation to the BBL. Uh, in fact, yesterday the, the, the Regional Legislative Assembly adopted a resolution urging the Senate and uh, the House of Representatives, in fact the Senate is now still in the period of uh, interpolation and debate, to include in the BBL the provision stating therein that the employees of the ARMM whose offices may be abolished as a result of the abolition of the arm may be retained, those qualified ones, because in the BBL there is no such provision that, 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 that states that uh, employees of the ARMM will be uh, absorbed by the BTA uh, in, 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 in the event that uh, the BBL will be ratified. So perhaps you can, uh, uh, you can help us with that, uh, sir. And this is actually speaking for and in behalf of uh, the rank and file officials of uh, the ARMM that they be protected also because in the BBL what was stated is that there will be a schedule of abolishing or uh, a gradual, uh, a gradual phase out perhaps of offices and in effect uh, employees will be terminated. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney, uh, Assemblyman uh, Padate. You can, you can be assured of this. We will push for that in the period of amendments uh, as the Senate. Uh, there should be security of tenure, even, even assuming that you are creating a new entity. Uh, the, the institutional memory uh, of our of our uh, rank and file employees in the arm will still be put to good use and definitely uh, we should be able to make that accommodation and, and push for it in the Senate. Uh, let us get the materials and then we will work on it. Uh, you have my commitment in pushing for this. Uh, thank you. Uh, we now proceed with uh, Froilan Mendoza. Ma'am? Froilin, sorry, Froilin. Yes. Froilan is a male, female, so Froilin is female. Lam, Lambayingan? Lambayingan Women's Organization. You have the floor, ma'am. Marami pong salamat sa pagkakataong ito na naimbitan po kami sa napakalagang usapin na ito na pagbabago ng ating saligang batas. Kung mamarapati ng mahal na senador, babasahin ko po ang position statement ng mga katutubong kababaihan sa Autonomous Region of Muslim Mindanao. We, the 35 chapter grassroots women leaders and members of the Taduray Lambangian Women's Organization and non-Moro Indigenous Women Organization based in the hinterlands of Maguindanao and 100 other IP women gathered last March 6 and 7, 2018 in a consultation called Indigenous Women Consultation on Human Rights, Peace Process and Federalism, hereby affirm that we haven't decided yet why we changed the Constitution, neither to make our stand whether there is a need to amend or revise the Constitution for the following reason. First, we are still in a limbo to understand why there is a need to amend or revise the Constitution. We have limited access to information for us to make our informed choice. This is not a matter of we say yes because this is the flavor of the man or because this is what the President wants and what the Congress people wants. We want to make a stand so that we know where we will locate ourselves. The truth is, we have so many fears and questions too. What is in it for us as indigenous women? How we will benefit from this political arrangement? What it is really? What is meant to the current situation of indigenous women in the conflict areas? Will it address the battle cry of the indigenous Tadurai women of Mount Firis, who at this point in time running for their life and crying for social justice? because of the ongoing armed conflict? How about our land reform program? The Indigenous People's Rights Act is already a very substantial law, recognizing the right of Indigenous people over the ancestral domain. Will that be protected? 
when we change the constitution can we just craft a law that will not put at risk the social justice provision of the constitution there are many loopholes in our social reform law why not strengthen and sharpen the section 13 article 10 of the constitution when we were in local government unit can group together and coordinate their efforts to work together to pull resources and test what power they will use. As indigenous women, we only appreciate the importance of amending or changing the constitution if we feel we are safe, if we feel that we have space and that we have right representation and meaningfully participate and be heard if how this new political settlement will address ordinary services for poor people to change their life. Number two question, if so, what part of the Constitution should be amended or revised? First, it's about land reform, a set of reform if this administration is really serious for a radical change. Second, how to address political dynasty today? How will this new settlement address this behavior to make a change, giving them more power? This is the reason why this country is lagging behind with our neighboring Asian countries. How will this new settlement address this? We have a weak provision protecting our environment. We have to remember Philippines is in the point of no return in terms of the status on the state of our environment. Thirdly, if it's constituent assembly, it's the same people who will actually vote. A Congress dominated by political dynasty who will vote for, vote for their political dynasty. Where is people's participation? Where in the Constitution, Constitutional Convention, people have democratic political participation. And this can only be realized if we will not shortcut the process Representation is coming from unrepresented sex sector. Lastly, if Congress convene as a constituent assembly for the purpose of amending or revising the Constitution, should the Senate or the House of Representatives vote jointly or separately? They should vote separately because Senate, from our experience, is an independent institution and can be rely on and they think deeply and independently. Thank you, Fio Bagi Muya. Thank you, Ms. Mendoza, for your uh, statement, your position paper. We have next uh, Ms. Sofia uh, Pagital, Mindanao People's Caucus. Go ahead, ma'am, you have the floor. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. For the people here attended the public hearing, um, I'm so sorry I haven't prepared my position letter because um, we've been in a meeting with the German Embassy in Davao. So, kakarating lang namin. But, um, this is the proposition of the several CSOs kasama na po ng mga bang Samoro here in central Mindanao. We are not against for whatever po na gusto ng gobyerno para sa ating constitution. Whether it be constitutional amendments or constitu con con constitutional convention. As long as it would bring the voice of minorities like us, the Bangsamoro, and the IPs. As long as our rights will not be deprived and right to self-determination ay makakamit naming mga bang Samoro, then rest assured po, whatever form of government ang gusto nyong ipatupad, taus puso po kaming susuporta. But we would like to take this opportunity po to air our side, lalong lalo na para sa mga civil society organizations and the bang Samoro as well. That sana po, Suportahan din po ng Senate and the lower house ang pagpasa po ng BBL first before federalism. Lahat po kami dito naniniwala 
na makakamit, makakatulong. In any case po, ang pagpasamuna ng bank sa Moro Basic Law bago po ang federalism. And sana po, pagtuunan din po ng gobyerno ang pagbangon ng Marawi City. And at the same time, many months from now, barangay election po. So hopefully, peace and security, particularly in Mindanao po, sana po maging okay siya. Yun lang po at maraming salamat. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Sofia. Um, from uh, SC Cup, uh, Mr. Francis, oi, kato kayo, Consolacion, uh, Student Council Alliance of the Philippines. Go ahead, you have the floor. Good afternoon, good afternoon, Your Honor. I would like to read the position paper of the Student Council Alliance of the Philippines. There is a need to amend the Constitution because there are two pressure pre pressures present. First, BBL. Because there are provisions that could be affected by the BBL because BBL is federal in concept. And therefore, because you will be creating and expanding the coverage of ARMM and affecting many provisions and the existing law. Because the new constitution must be able to accommodate the demands of the Bangs of Moro. For a long time, they have been fighting for a homeland now that, they are, now that they already reduced their demand from separatism to autonomy or BBL. Therefore, we also accommodate them. The second demand has something to, to do with federalism. There already is a campaign for federalism affecting the entire regions of the Philippines. According to the proposal of PDP Laban, there are 11 to 12 regions between the national government and provincial government. Therefore, you are creating a federal region. This federal region is not written in the Constitution. Therefore, you have to accommodate it. However, before we proceed to the charter change itself, we must address problems from the grassroots level. I present to you three of our non-negotiables. First, political dynasty law. We need to have a law that will define what political dynasty is and up to what degree of consanguinity. Political dynasty allows room for monopoly of power and thereby prevents other Filipinos to be elected to office as well since they already consolidated the power to their circle. Second, political party reform. We should overhaul all political parties and clearly determine the ideologies of each party to avoid redundancy. For example, we could fund our political parties parties to push for certain advocacies and then check whether or not they function not just during elections for with that we can help we can hold them accountable also this is a way to avoid the padrino system wherein because of financial support of politicians from from capitalists they have favors with them third is the sk reform we should give a proper avenue for the youth to push for a legislative agenda to increase their participation in the government. If these non-negotiables are met, aren't met, there's, then there should be no charter, charter change at all. We should be reminded that we are all talking about the highest law of the land here and everyone should have a say in it regardless of having elected reps, representatives or not. Second point. We should have a constitutional convention instead of constitutional assembly to have legitim legit legitimate power to decide and provide avenues for nuances. We've never had a constitution which was crafted by the very people who were elected freely and democratically. Thus, we should realize that the power is with the people and that this constitution is our constitution. Moreover, among remote areas in our country, unfortunately, Filipinos are clueless or little do they know about our constitution. Therefore, if we want a broader participation, we need to have a broader representation because this is the only way for the people to know more about the constitution. Yes, it may be expensive, but are we really willing to take the risk at the expense of our constitution? This charter will eventually mark the future of the Filipino people and at all costs, there should be no room for compromise just to pave way for a mediocre constitution. Third point for improvement is the current track of the charter change. First, we suggest the government to collate all suggestions for, for, a, for a federal model apart from PDP. This is to ensure that no one has monopolized the constitution. 
Second, provide consultation in every city and municipality to heighten awareness and political education among their constituents. Third, we should provide education for constitution first before digging into federalism. On our end, the Student Council Alliance of the Philippines, with your help, is very much willing in conducting political education sessions on constitution and federalism to clarify such as automatic decentralization, automatic IRA divide, and etc. We need to really have a fruitful discourse to ensure that we should that this federalism, if ever be pushed, it will be a federalism that we need. That's all your honor. Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Consolation of the Student Council Alliance of the Philippines. Uh, and finally, uh, we have Miss Mr. or Miss Guillamel. Guillamel Alim is Yes, sir. Uh, I think there's an oh, over there. The, the, the po sa dulo. Mula sa consortium of Bangsamoro Civil Society. Gandang hapon po. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Gandang hapon po. Uh, my courtesy and with reverence to the Honorable Senator. Uh, Can we have the mic, please? Parang mahina. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Much better. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Uh, magandang hapon po sa lahat. Salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, I accepted the invitation not because I have answers to the questions at hand, but because I have more questions to raise. Let me confess that I don't even have a basic course on federalism especially, which is the flavor of the month. Uh, it has never been part of our political culture, and in fact, during the time of Marcos, in his disparate attempt to extend his power, there was a sudden change of the constitution and the shift to parliamentary form of government. But it was a failed experiment and so we abandoned it completely. I also don't speak the language of law and so pardon me if I cannot go into the very details of the discourse. To start with, I would like to raise some points which reflect my position vis-a-vis -vis the question of charter tense and also my ignorance. One, what are the problems that we want a charter change or federalism to answer? If you say federalism is the answer, what is the question? Do we have deeper grasp and analysis of the problems we have today? Are we ready for a charter change? If it is federalism as it is now, do we know what is it? How many in this room can articulate federalism, its nuances, complexities, and applicability in the Philippine context? Isang kamag-anak ko po ay pumasok sa hukpong federal. Noong tanungin ko siya bakit ka pumasok, sabi niya, there is a project and a teaser. One of my staff at my office was doing a sideline job by helping urban poor filling up forms membership in Hogpong Federal and she got some money from it. Number two, have we already maximized the usefulness of the 1987 Constitution? How many or what percentage of the Filipinos know the present Constitution? And now we want to shift to something that is even more strangers to all of us. Is the failure of good governance mainly due to a dysfunctional constitution or people running the government? Number three, rather than spending energy and resources in amending the charter today, why don't we spend these resources and energies in responding to our existing socio-political and economic problems? Widespread poverty due to inequitable distribution of resources and opportunities. Wanton exploitation of our natural resources by big companies. Unemployment that forced many Filipinos to work abroad and become victims of cruel treatment. 
Corruption in government that sucks the bloods of the ordinary Filipino. Poor governance that denies accountability, transparency, professionalism, and people's participation. Unstable peace and security that creates fear and human insecurity. Drugging violence in the countryside that causes massive destruction, death, and sends thousands to become diaspora and many. My position. I am not opposed to a charter change. For that matter, federalism per se. But it is not for now. It can be a, a better option, but not this time. We are already divided in many issues. The present move to change our constitution is starting to divide our people. We need longer time to know what federalism is. I still believe that the present constitution can provide answers to the basic problems enumerated above. We only need to fully implement the laws. It is true that in a vertical relationship between the central government and the regions, the centralization of political authority and economic resources can be the best political arrangement. This will improve the center-periphery center relationship and will eventually break what is known as the Manila imperialism and excessive control over centralized public finance by Malacanang on one hand and the mendicancy status of local government to national government on the other hand. But shifting to a federal form hastily, when most provinces and regions are not are ill-prepared, will be dangerous. We need at least 10 years or even more to study federalism, its appropriateness in our context and the kind that will fit our socio-political culture. We need to work out a federal narrative that everybody understands and where everybody can participate. And this will take time. Therefore, to drop a federal government that is participative and inclusive, we need people's participation through a constitutional convention. The appropriate mode to revise the constitution is through a more participatory, objective, and more deliberative constitutional convention whose members are elected for no other purpose than to review and propose changes to the Constitution. CONCON provides effective mechanism to mobilize and elect more independent, expert, and reformist delegates from different sectors who will support a change to a genuine federal system and not being influenced by politicians' self and political interest. Amendments or revision to the fundamental law of land should be made in a very deliberate and consultative manner so that the citizen can fully participate and eventually give their informed decision. Uh, having seen the signal, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to end by saying that this is not the time for us to tinker on the Constitution. Let us study first what we are uh, changing with. We are all in the bandwagon for, for whatever reason we should know first. So this is not the time. We will spend better our resources and energy for our urgent needs. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Alim. Uh, we have adjusted our hearing. Hindi ito tulad ng mga hearing sa Senado. Bubuksan natin ang hearing sa ating mga babayan. Uh, for a open forum. You can either ask questions or give your own insights and inputs para ho mas participatory po tayo. Uh, we have Jojo Cortez, uh, Cotobato City, City Urban Poor Federation. Nasaan po si Ginoong uh, Jojo Cortez? Baka nagsira. Um, assembly Assemblyman Zia Alonto Adyo. Sir, you have the floor, please. We have microphones on both sides. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Hello. Yeah, thank you very much, sir. Um, 
My position does not necessarily reflect the collective position of the Regional Assembly. I believe my colleague already uh, articulated the position of the of the arm RLA RMM. My 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 thoughts regarding the subject matter, the discussion of this uh, assembly of this hall, pertains to where our legal experts or deans took off. So let me just say state that in the end, the issue of whether or not the Bangsamoro people do agree with the enactment of BBL, I believe most of the resource speakers here have already stated that they are in favor of the enactment of BBL. Um, few weeks ago, or few months, last month, the President has already created, by virtue of an executive order, the creation of the consultative committee to review the 1987 Philippine Constitution. And one of the members of this committee is, in fact, for your former colleague, the former colleague of Senator Kiko Pangilinan, uh, the uh, father of the local government code, former Senator Coco Pimentel. Now, we were having this discussion whether or not to amend the Constitution. Nene Pimentel. Nene Pimentel, I'm sorry, sir. To amend the Constitution or whether to revise it. Now, just earlier, perhaps many of our audience here, we were able to be enlightened with the difference, the nomenclature between amendment and revision. We are under, we are, I'm in the opinion, Mr. Chair, uh, sir, that when, in, when we try, at least attempt, to change the Constitution, and may I uh, borrow the, uh, the, the terminology used by the Dean of MSU IID to reform, a constitutional reform, by way of revision, we are of the opinion that it is better to have it on constitutional convention. But the question whether or not, the issue really, Mr. Uh, sir, is still, the people are still fear fearful whether partisanship, whether political pol uh, family dynasty would enter into the process. And my observation, Mr. Speaker, it is called this elementary. My observation is that if and when we proceed with the proceedings of having a constitutional convention in order to preclude the process and insulate the process from political partisanship and to talk basically what the, the issues that really uh, that they're important to the people, we preclude sitting officials or those who are about to end their term from running for the convention or joining the convention. That way, we can preclude partisanship and instead elect IPs. I would rather want to see IP delegates in the convention. I would rather want to see deans of legal experts in the convention. I would rather want to see positions from, from our farmers and fisher folks rather than the overwashed and recycled politicians. So, first, let's put a mechanism to preclude sitting officials or those who are about to end their term from running and joining the convention. Now, whether or not we should amend the Constitution, and many of us here have on their own thoughts, and there are several schools of thought that we can actually follow. But in terms of effectivity and efficiency, I believe the Senate and the Congress should, should, uh, uh, should decide and elect separately. And much has been said about political dynasty, which is in, actually in the letters of the Philippine Constitution. But there is no enabling law to enforce this provision in the Constitution. Anti-dynasty law is just one step in making sure that there's going to be a participatory democracy in our country. But we also need to counter that, to enforce that with a strong political system. Now, we've been talking about anti-political dynasty, but we don't actually speak about strengthening the political system. One of the ways where in many other countries, developing countries, um, maintain progress and development by form of their policymakers exporting na national interest, it's because they have a strong political system. Ours, I may say, is very weak compared to other ASEAN neighbors or ASEAN neighbors. So what we propose, what I observe, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Sir, is in order for us to make sure that there won't go, there's going to be a mechanism to preclude political dynasty from emerging again, 
We also have to couple that with strengthening the political system. In, in, in Germany, Mr. Mr. Uh, sir, in Germany, the state subsidizes political parties. It's not the politicians like myself. When I, whenever I run for an office, I actually spend for my political, uh, you know, for joining any office, running for any office. As compared to when the state subsidizes, there's going to be a political mechanism wherein the party actually select their own leaders. Who among their party members should really have to, to run? And that, in a way, Mr. Chair, you actually put up a safeguard that no political family shall dominate a political party. And therefore, you disallow nephews, sons, spouses, cousins from running because it is intrinsic in the political system that they cannot do and they cannot practice such. But on the issue of PBL and the federalism, no Bangsamoro here would agree for federalism and then disagree on BBL or the other way around. Because when in fact when you talk about federalism, you just have to look into two administrative regions. One in the north and one here in the south. The Cordillera Administrative Region and the Autonomous Regional Government. So I think Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Chair my time is up. I just want to leave you with um, the part of the speech of one of the framers of the 1987 Philippine Constitution, former Senator Tumuko Alonto. He was the uh, minority leader in the, uh, in the convention. And this is a, uh, his a sponsorship speech at the 1986 Constitutional Convention Records, Volume 3, uh, sponsorship speech of Commissioner Alonto. And I quote Mr. Uh, Mr., 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 uh, Mr. Chair. I dare say that if to achieve unity, it is necessary to divide the country into, se into several autonomous states bound together by a common goal and sense of oneness. We should not hesitate to do so. If unity cannot be achieved in a strictly unitary system, as experience has taught us, then by all means, let us refer to the only option left, op left open for us, unity and diversity, which seems to be the goal fixed for us by divine wisdom when our ancestors, belonging to a common racial strain, but speaking different tongues, ventured through uncharted seas guided by the same divine providence to these different islands separated by natural barriers, yet belonging to the same geographical region. For the sake of the hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of precious lives of our kith and kin that were sacrificed in the fields of battles to defend their newfound paradise, for us, their progeny, let us forge the unity of the anvil of necessity, perchance of God Almighty, whose providence controls the destiny of men and nation, grants that we can preserve these beautiful isles for the generations to come. And go. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, thank you, Assembly Mala John. Uh, just for the information of uh, uh, Assembly Mala John, we are actually uh, in the process of putting together an anti dynasty measure in the Senate. Uh, in fact, we are uh, rooting a draft as we speak uh, and seeking comments from a number of the Senate. And hopefully in the Senate we will be able to sponsor the measure uh, before we go on recess uh, in uh, the following week. Uh, we go on recess March, March 22, if I'm not mistaken, or 23. So, yan, medyo pinapaanda na natin yan. On the issue of uh, state subsidy to political parties, uh, actually, before martial law was declared, there was a form of state subsidy to political parties. Uh, under the Omnibus Election Code then, pre martial law, uh, there was a provision that, in so many words, said the administration party representative in the Board of Election Inspector, as well as the dominant opposition or minority party, uh, uh, representative.
presentation will be entitled to poll duty allowance uh, at the precinct level and that allowance is drawn from the national treasury. In other words, kaya malakas yung two-party system nung panahon ng bago magdeklara ng martial law ay dahil sa bawat presinto sa buong Pilipinas entitled ang administration party isang partido yung administration at yung dominant opposition party o minority party to poll watchers during the election during the election uh, canvassing so they are part of the board of election inspectors just like they are today political parties are represented in the BEI in the precinct level hindi ba except that the difference is then their allowances for poll duty, their daily per diems, was paid for by the state. Today, it is not the case. It is the politicians, it is the party that coughs up the allowances uh, for our poll watchers. Tinanggal yan after martial law was declared, the state is the party to allow. Na dapat sana, binalik yung party system sa akin, yung fact, naging multi-party, dapat binalik din yung, entire, yung uh, subsidy sa mga poll watchers. Because if you have, for example, uh, since we're a multi-party system, the, a provision of the law will simply state that uh, coalitions or parties diba, to be determined by the government shall be accredited and, and uh, by the government shall be entitled to uh, all watch and allowance for the representatives in the Board of Election Inspectors. And if you state subsidy ka lang. So lahat ng mga politiko, bakit ako hindi sasama sa partido? Kailangan ko ngayon sumama sa partido para hindi na ako ang gagastos nung all watch and ko. Gastos na ng partido. May budget ng nasa estado. So you know, I just wanted to put that. And that can actually be a law other than amendment to the Constitution. Uh, there are just some questions. Unless there are some questions, we would like to extend a bit because we have a delay in the break of the break. Unless there are some questions or other comments, who would like to take the floor? Is uh, there Because we want it on record. Uh, well, habang iniisip pa ninyo, meron mga nag-submit dito. How do you, how does your office secure the present economic provisions of the 1987 Constitution that protects the rights of wealth and welfare of workers and the Bill of Rights? Siguro I guess the question ito is, kung magkukonkon ba o, o charter change, matatanggal ba ang Bill of Rights natin? Matatanggal ba ang uh, protection, in provisions on the protection of the rights and welfare of workers. Um, well, sa totoo lang, pagka nag-charter change ka na, everything and anything can be changed. Wala nang, ano yan, wala nang uh, limit. Kaya nga yung mga nagsasabing, wala nang no, no election sa charter change. Mga nagsasabing, hindi, economic provisions na, ang tatalakayan ng charter change, that is theoretical. Because once you start the process of charter change, anything goes. And so, how do you protect it? Well, if it's a constitutional convention, assuming, then make sure that you, you support delegates who will be pro-labor, pro-human rights. Pero na proseso na uh, and on the economic provisions, the same. Uh, pwedeng takalin lahat yan, yung 60-40 uh, requirements for uh, Filipino citizenship and ownership or exploitation of resources, ownership of uh, land, pwedeng lahat maguhin yan uh, on the charter change plan. On which part of the 87 Philippine Constitution uh, which will be revised? Uh, well, yun nga. Iba-iba ang mga tinatalakay. Uh, sabi federalism, uh, 
Sabi naman, I will at issue, pinapost ng Consultative Commission uh, na binuon ng ating Pangulo, uh, Presidential Federal na itinutulak. And then, uh, sabi nila, napasa ko na sa diyaryo kanina, magre-recommend sila na hindi sa batas ang anti-political dynasty, dapat sa saligang batas para maliwala. So, yan yung mga ilang mga puntahin, pero hindi pa nga maliwala kung ano talaga ang mga specifics. We are still in the process of uh, discussing that and that's why we have these public hearings. Uh, ito, I guess nasagot na ito kanina, no? what is the need to amend uh, the 1987 Constitution considering we are a Bangsamoro community. Kung may mas seryosong problema ang dapat patunuan ng pansin, lalo na sa bayan namin. Uh, I, I don't understand this completely, but the way I understand this rather is uh, ito tuloy yung BGF dahil na may charter change kung wala. Dapat yung bangsa Moro Basic Law may pasaya. And that's why in the Senate, we are already in the period of interpolation. So, uh, independent of the charter change debates, we believe that the BPL should be uh, enacted in the law. So, yun ang ating position kung po dyan. Um, I have one basic, one question that maybe one or two can answer among our panel. Um, May mga nagsasabi na that's why BPL is being proposed because the harm was not uh, what? Was not effective enough. Hindi ba? Kumbaga, the harm was supposed to be precisely the enactment of law to address diba? development, progress, and peace in, in uh, Muslim Mindanao. It didn't, well, obviously, it was not sufficient, and that's why we're now pushing for a BBL. I mean, that is pretty much part of the narrative. My question is this. If ARM was imperfect and had to be changed, or we are now in the process of changing it, into a BBL. Uh, what is our assurance, for example, that if we move to a federal state in Muslim Mindanao, that it will work? In other words, kaya nga natin binabago dahil kulang. Uh, so, ano assurance natin na pag binago natin ngayon, not BBL per se, no, but yung federal state, mas isa pa nga yung BBL, may mag-federal state pa tayo that it will work. Doon sa mga, anyone can actually uh, comment and, and answer the question. Parang, uh, why would a federal state work if previous efforts at providing decentralization have not? Um, yes, sir. Uh, board member, uh, assemblyman. For that. This, uh, this is actually, the answer is, uh, Personal to me, not, a, not as a member of the RLA, but rather the Bangsa Moro. Now, uh, to my mind, uh, actually, there is no assurance. There is no assurance. Nobody can give us assurance that should we, uh, that, the, that the ARM, should it be converted into a federal state, must gather that buhay. But then we have to take chances. For instance, in, 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 the, in the present arm, there are several laws, or there are several provisions of the 1954, a law that created the arm, uh, which were not implemented. For instance, for having a regional special security force in the 1954. It was provided therein that the RMM should have its special regional security force. An enabling law was passed by the previous assemblies, and yet it was not implemented for being contrary to the Constitution as they have argued. argued. For instance, we, we filed a bill. I filed a bill seeking our giving or granting permanent status to provisional teachers in the arm. When you say provisional teachers, these are teachers who were allowed to teach sons passing the licensure examination for teachers. 
they were required to renew every year. Now, the bill is now still pending with the Committee of Education. There are some quarters telling us that the bill is unconstitutional and that the CSC will not implement the same because it's, it runs counter to the Magna Carta. So that is where lies the uh, problem. We have good laws, but Nima implement. No? The, 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 the government refuses to implement the laws crafted by the regional assembly. Binigyan ka ng right, pero nakatali ka naman sa uh, yung kamay mo. For instance, uh, the regional legislative assembly was given the right or authority to create local government units. We have created at least 12 municipalities because under RA 1954 and uh, Muslim Mindanao Act number 25, Muslim Mindanao uh, Act number 25, the ARNM is allowed, to, uh, RNA is allowed to create municipalities. We have created 12 municipalities and 53 barangays with no internal revenue allotment. Sinasabi ng gobyerno, we cannot give funds kasi kayo ang nag-create, you give funds to this. You see, I'd rather, but I am sorry sir, you are, you are with the, the previous administration, but I, I do not subscribe to the conclusion of the previous administration that ARM is a failed experiment. I, 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 I took offense of that, really. It is not a failed experiment, but rather the government was not actually, the, the, the entire provision of 1954 was not fully implemented due to the, the refusal of the government to recognize the full autonomy or the, the degree of autonomy given to the area. Now, if we shift to a federal state, or perhaps on a federal as a federal state, we will be given enough uh, leeway to craft laws suitable to our needs as banks and our funds. For instance, we would be allowed to craft laws on the establishment of Sharia Islamia with, with perhaps modifications. It may not be recognized in other states, but it will surely be recognized in our state as an independence, as a part of the federal. We will be allowed to, to manage our own resources such as the Liguas and Mars, the natural gas in Sulu, and other natural resources, and the uh, NPC in Lanao del Sur. While there, while there, there is no assurance, but uh, to me, as, as a Bank Samora, I am optimistic. But with people electing right leaders, people electing competent leaders in the future Bank Samora State, we will have a better life under the federal uh, system of government. Thank you, sir. You, you mentioned when people elect the right leaders. And I think that is, again, a challenge. And I think it was mentioned earlier by one of our resource persons that precisely importante yung anti-dynasty uh, law, importante yung party reform law, because uh, siguro pati yung anti-turncoatism measure para uh, these are all uh, reform, electoral reform interventions uh, that will help and provide support for our citizens being able to elect the right leaders. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Uh, meron bang mga gusto pang magtanong, magsalita? Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. Can you introduce yourself, please? Go ahead. Uh, good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Um, I am Abdel Nur Kampong. I'm actually an employee of the uh, Office of the Regional Governor. But my question, as well as suggestion, is does not reflect the official stand, of course, in the Office of the Regional Governor. Uh, I am putting up this question on uh, my personal capacity. Um, actually, my question, uh, Mr. Chair, is more of a clarification. I think most of the speakers here were uh, given the opportunity to speak, stated, of course, that uh, the Bank Samoro basic law should be passed before uh, any move for federalism. And I also strongly support that being part of the Bank Samoro, uh, particularly from Marawi and Maranao, we strongly support the passage of the BBL first or should be a priority before uh, any change uh, in the Constitution. My question or clarification is that 
in a case that that should happen, and hopefully it happens, the Bangsa Moro Basic Law will be passed, and then we will the, the product of that will be a Bangsa Moro state or or entity. What will happen to that state or entity comes federalism. Would is would that entity and all its powers and powers would be carried on to the next federal Bangsamoro state, if that's the, the appropriate term, or there since, as you mentioned, that when you have a constitutional convention, anything goes on and anything happens, then it's, there's still no guarantee. I mean, you have a Bangsamoro entity in place, but then comes charter change, there's a chance that it could lose or even gain some of its powers. So that's the question I put, and the suggestion that I would like uh, the, the, the committee to note is that please ensure that it will, once the Bansom Moro Basic Law is passed, ensure that its powers are also guarded until, up to the, when it's passed to the next Bansom Moro State under the federal form of government when that comes to pass. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Uh, actually, during the hearings of the Bansom Moro Basic Law, uh, in the Senate, uh, one of the resource persons was Secretary Sani Dominguez. And he was actually expressing his concern and perhaps his opinion on federalism uh, in the context of charter change and in relation to the Bangsamoro Basic Law. In fact, he's, you know, he, he, he was of the opinion that perhaps the Bangsamoro Basic Law should be used as a template in terms of seeing how resources being devolved in such amounts to a uh, Bangsamoro region, autonomous region, or Bangsamoro entity. And dun makikita na ganun pala ang magiging daan ng federalismo. Ganun pala ang magiging resulta pagka binigyan ng resources in a Bangsamoro entity uh, ang mga lokal. Because as we speak, there is actually a debate going on. Is it federalism or greater uh, greater no-nonsense decentralization? Because ang uh, reklamo, 19% uh, lang ng ira ang napupunta sa Mindanao uh, and the rest, 17 or 18% sa Visayas, the, the bulk is, is uh, Luzon. So, but ganon? In other words, what if diba, the way to go should be review the local government code, strengthen, you know, revise the ira allotments, provide uh, more resources to Visayas and Mindanao. In fact, some are saying federalism dapat 20% uh, lang ang national government, 80% ang uh, federal state go, I mean, yung, yung uh, federal states. Uh, so, may mga nagsasabi, Pwede namang gawin yun kahit hindi amendahin yung saligang batas. Basta lang baguhin yung ira allotment at hindi malimita sa ganong klaseng existing. So, so, so to answer your question, uh, one, we will go ahead with the BBL, that is the trajectory. Two, the BBL as implemented might even be you know, the, the, the gateway for a for a federalization of the rest of the country. Uh, some of those who are proposing federalism are saying we don't need to do it right away, everywhere. Uh, it can be a stage-by-stage -stage federalism. Ang sabi ko nga dun sa first hearing, uh, parang uh, federalism by installment. Uh, so, so ganun ang, I'm sorry if I'm not able to answer it very clearly, but I think what the, the, the route we're taking is, let's go ahead with BBL, see how effective it will be implemented. It may, 
serve as precisely a window to how uh, uh, federalism will actually be implemented nationwide. Uh, so, so that's that's how I would answer your question at this stage. But of course, uh, uh, that's why I think we really need to continue this discussion. Because, ano ba talaga yung federal state? Uh, ilan ba yan? Paano ba popondohan yan? May mga nagsasabi na uh, based on the earnings, revenues of, revenue of government, uh, ang lumalabas, the only regions today that are actually raising revenue and are in the blue, for lack of a better term, hindi, hindi sila dependent on uh, other sources of income, would be NCR, Region 4A, and Region 3. So all other regions in the country are dependent on uh, national sources rather than being self-generating uh, in terms of revenue. So how do you now federalize given this situation? Well, you know, these are the challenges that we really have to look into and questions that really come to mind when we're talking about federalism. The other thing is, and they're saying, I think an, an article by Shell Habito, on the issue of federalism is, are we creating a, well, we are going to be creating a new level, a new, a new bureaucracy. Because uh, may province, may city, may municipality, may national, and then may wrong state. So, panibago yun. I guess, in fact, ARM would be in the best position to, uh, to share with us uh, that there is a third there's an additional layer from the provinces, uh, between the provinces and the national government. So, magandang, uh, maybe in future technical working groups, we can ask Governor Mujib to, to share with us no, the, the dynamics of a, a, a regional level uh, governance in the context of a unitary presidential uh, form of government. Uh, so I hope I answered your question. Last question. Mr. Sami Ibrahim, Municipal Councilor, Dato Piang, Maguindanao. Time check, uh, past 2.30 na. Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. Uh, magandang hapon po to our good senator, uh, sa ating mga panelists, uh, sa ato ng mga nandito sa loob. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Actually, sir, our mayor was also invited here. Uh, pero meron pong uh, kasabay na uh, napakahalaga din pong uh, forum uh, ngayon sa Buluan Maguindanao on BBL. Kaya po, yung mga ating mga mayors po ay nandudoon sa Buluan Maguindanao. Um, bago ko po, Mr. Chairman, ibigay yung uh, aking katanungan uh, gusto ko lang pong kung po pwede pong balikan yung uh, inyong tinanong kanina doon sa assurance uh, sapagkat uh, kami po sa Bangsamoro uh, homeland ay uh, matagal na pong uh, minimithi yung uh, totoong pagbabago uh, pagbabago sa pamamagitan po ng uh, wastong pagpapatupad ng mga programa para po sa ating mga kababayan. Uh, sa akin pong pananaw, yung assurance, pwede po tayo makapagbigay ng assurance sa sistema ng pamahalaan. Pero po, wala pa tayong assurance doon sa taong mailuklok doon sa sistema yun. Ang ating Bangsamoro problem ay dapat po dalawa. Kaakibat po itong dalawang bagay po dapat ang mangyayari dito. Magandang sistema at tamang tao ang uupo doon sa sistema. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Your Honor, sa amin pong sabayan po ng Datopiang, nakapagsagawa po kami ng uh, isang dialogo patungkol po sa pagpapalit ng ating saligang batas. Pero ang uh, napag-usapan po doon ay yung issue po ng federalismo na kung saan Ito po yung pulso ng ating mga mamamayan na nasa baba kapag tinanong mo sila kung ano 
ang dapat baguhin sa ating saligang batas. At ang isasagot po sa atin, iyan bang pagbabago ng saligang batas ay titiyak na gaganda ang buhay namin? Yun po yung parating sinasagot, sinasabi sa amin, gaganda ba ang buhay namin dyan kapag pinalitan ang saligang batas? So that, Mr. Chairman, ang nakita po namin dito, bukod po doon sa ating adikay na baguhin ang saligang batas, importante po masyadong palakasin yung public accountability. Kasi po, kahit anuman po ilagay nating sistema ng pamahalaan, kung yung mga nakaupo dyan ay hindi, will not religiously ipatupad ang sinumpaang tungkulin, mananatili pong problema ang, ng ating bayan. Kaya po, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, kami po ay nagpapasalamat sapagkat uh, uh, bigin, binigyan po, po kami ng pagkakataon to be heard in this public hearing. Ang mensahe po ng LGO Datopiang, kami po ay sumusuporta sa anumang balaking pagbabago ng saligang batas kung ito ay magpapaganda, magpapatibay lalo sa kinabukasan ng ating mga kababayan. Marami pong salamat. Maraming maraming salamat, Ginoong Ibrahim, Councilor Dato Piang Maguindanao. Uh, and ending on a good note, na ang tanong, ano ba yung charter change na yan? Magkakaroon ba ng dagdag na trabaho? Mas maganda ba ang magiging investment climate? Uh, yung kumbaga yung usapan sa kalye makakain ba yan meron bang uh, pakinabang ang taong bayan dyan o politiko lang bang makikinabang dyan o kung sino-sino lang so that's why tutuloy-tuloy ang ating uh, talakayan tuloy-tuloy pa rin ang ating mga pagpupulong bilang chairman ng senate committee on constitutional amendments uh, uh, we continue to have this dialogue and this uh, interaction with our citizens and our communities. At nais po nating pasalamatan ang ating mga resource persons sa inyong panahon. Uh, nais kong uh, pasalamatan ang uh, mga papasalamatan na ito. Um, of course, Governor Mujib Hataman, uh, COS Attorney Mambuay, uh, ay, hindi pala Attorney, COS, uh, Kampong Dato Rooney Sinsiwat, Assistant Cabinet Secretary Ahmad Guro, Ms. Irene Gonzalez, Engineer Avila Abubakar, uh, uh, Senior Superintendent Marcelo Pintak, ang ating Director for Intelligence and Security Service, Engineer Abdelnor Kampong, Ms. Rose Paltinka, Ms. Melanie Taib, Murad Sagat, Ms. Dorinda Tan, Uh, sa ating uh, Philippine National Police, maraming salamat sa inyong uh, pag-alala at support uh, kay, Chief, uh, kay uh, Senior Superintendent Oli Octavio at of course sa ating Armed Forces of the Philippines sa inyong pag-alala kay Lieutenant Colonel Eros James ng Uri ng Philippine Army at syempre sa ating lahat uh, bilang pangukas sa ating, ating statement before we call the closing remarks Yes Uh, ang uulitin lang po natin, ang uh, Charter Change Amendment ay hindi ito usapin ng mga politiko lang. Hindi dapat ito ituring na uh, walang pakailam o walang interes o uh, hindi sinasama ang taong bayan. In the ultimate analysis, it is the people who ratified this constitution in 1987 with a vote of almost uh, 80% of the electorate. Kayo, uh, we are living under a constitutional democracy because the citizens ratified this uh, 31 years ago. And if there is going to be any debate and discussion, uh, the citizens themselves have to be part of the process. Dapat kasama kayo. Hindi pa pwedeng i i iwanan ito sa mga public leaders lamang natin o mga politiko. Uh, and we are trying our best to uh, ensure this. With this, uh, we would like to suspend the uh, hearing of the Senate Committee on Constitutional Amendments and may we request uh, Ms. Norkalila, 
me, ma'am. Uh, Mambuhay Kampong, Chief of Staff of our uh, Governor, to give us the closing remarks. Maraming salam. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum to everyone. Thirty years ago, we were given a constitution that has placed the people and social justice as, as, at the core. In that same constitution, the essence of the autonomous region has been recognized. The ARMM has been through constant change. Although this region has structural flaws in terms of devolution and probably intergovernmental relations, we in the ARMM are a living proof that reform is possible, that better things await for those who believe and perceive. With the regional governor's determination and leadership, we have seen change taking place. We have seen roads and bridges connecting not only places but also homes. Not only school buildings rise, but also dreams of thousands of school children who have bright future, inshallah. On behalf of the Regional Governor, Mujib S. Hataman, it is my honor to close this public hearing on the proposed laws to change the 1987 Constitution. I would like to thank the Committee Chair on Constitutional Amendments, Senator Francis Kiko Pangilinan, Committee Secretary Sir Ambo, Sir, and the rest of the delegation from the Senate for coming to Cotabato to hear the views of, from the ARMM stakeholders. I would also like to extend the thanks to the gratitude to our resource persons for sharing your views, to our heads of ARMM agencies and offices, members of the RLA headed by Speaker Sinsuat, fellow civil servants, CSOs, media, and other stakeholders. Thank you for participating, either by listening or sharing your views. Once again, maraming salamat po, Senator. Thank you, uh, Chief of Staff Norcalilla, May uh, Mambuay Kampong. Uh, at this point, we are going to have a brief media interview with uh, Senator Francis uh, Kiko Pangilinan. We would like to call on our media friends to please come on stage for the media interview.